Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and to today's video which as promised in when was it last Sunday's video is going to be a what's new in my wardrobe for autumn video. Now as we were setting up the cameras I realised and this was not deliberate but there is a running theme <laughs> in colours, in black and camel slash beigey tan. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. This is, I suppose, what you can expect from any Emma Hill video. And for those of you who are regulars, same old, same old. Right, now we're gonna get started with today's video. So I'm gonna run through the items that are new in my wardrobe for the autumn season. And I'm gonna start off with... <gasps> Ta -da! Finally, she is mine. The row slouchy banana bag, size large. So yeah, I'm starting off with my most expensive purchase for this season. And for those of you who are regulars here to the channel, you'll have seen me banging on about this bag for I would say the last two years. It has been a firm, solid staple on my wish list. And for anyone who is unfamiliar with my wish list process and how that helps me shop, I will leave a link down below in the description box to a video that demonstrates how I do that because it's had a huge impact on how I shop. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, that link is down below in the description box. Anyway, the bag. So bought this in early August, I believe. And I wanted, it was on my wish list for so long because I had alerts set up on Vestiaire. As many of you will already know, I try and buy my leather goods secondhand, but grand. Now, the reason I ended up buying this new, because unfortunately I did not buy it pre-loved, but the reason I ended up buying this new was because on Louisa Via Roma, a little thing popped up on my phone because I have the app on my phone. And this is probably a little bit dangerous, but a little thing popped up saying there was 20% off new season for one hour. And I don't normally get sucked into these things, but I had a feeling that Louisa Villaroma did this bag and I thought, do you know what? 20% off when it's something of this value is quite a big chunk. So I went on, they did, they had the large size and so I ordered it. Now I'm not gonna do like a full on review of it or I'm not gonna talk about it too much at length right now because I'll save that for a full proper review video where I can list the pros and cons. And also because I only bought this sort of early August time, I haven't, I've worn it a few times, but I feel like I haven't worn it enough to really get the sort of pros and cons that I like to list in my review videos. So I wanna get a bit more wear out of it before I do one of those thorough reviews. But safe to say, I am very, very happy that she's now in my bag collection. Right, next up is this coat from Arquette, which again, you regulars will know, is a favorite brand of mine. And this is from their Redown collection, which I have spoken about for, I would say the last, yeah, for the last four years. So Arquette's Redown range is made using recycled down. So this is down that's already been used in other coats, or bedding like quilts, mattress toppers, or cushions and pillows. So no virgin down is ever used in their redown range. So they bring out these redown coats every autumn winter season and they've got some classic styles which are brought out year after year. And then every season they might add perhaps a slightly different style that's vibed up a little bit more or maybe they might just add some new colors. Now, in 2019, that was my first redown coat. I actually started off with the black short version, which is more of a jacket. Once I had that, that was it. I realized how warm they were because prior to actually buying that one, lots of you guys had recommended them to me or at least were asking me what I thought of them because they're kind of a, a cult thing, I suppose, especially for winter. And once I started off with that first one, I realized how warm it was. And then the season after, I knew I wanted a full length version. So I went for the long black. And now this year, this is my 2022 edition of Redown Coat. This is a mid version, but it's got a cinch waist. And I believe the color of this is 
dark beige, but all of the other colours and styles and lengths that I've got are also still currently available. They're sort of the classics, if you will. But this one, I don't remember seeing this style and this colour last year, so I'm assuming this one is new. Now, in terms of sizing, and this goes for all of these coats, I got this in a size small, which is not upsizing. So I'm a UK size 10, I'm five foot nine, which is roughly about 180 centimeters. So I am technically classed as tall, I'm above average height. And I would usually upsize in pretty much any of my coats. However, because these coats are quite bulky, I mean, they're down coats, puffer coats, they've got quite a lot of bulk to them, obviously, because they're there to keep you warm. I would not upsize in these. I feel like they're slightly generous in the sizing anyway. And I assume that's just how they've been designed to accommodate layers underneath because it is a winter garment. But yes, I would stay true to your normal size if you were looking at getting a coat from the redown range. Now, I should also mention that whilst the women's coats are lovely, they do also have men's and children's and... Wait for it. Look. <laughs> Doggy coats. So our four Bs do all have matching redown coats. They come with this little, uh, little elasticated section on the sort of neckline as, again as well, just so that it stays nice and snug, especially when it's really cold. And then if your doggy wears like ours, cause their necks are quite small. If your dog wears a harness, the harness can still go underneath and you can access the little D ring via this little covered up hole here where you can attach your lead to it. They're lovely and warm, really easy to clean actually, which I know might be, something that you guys might be curious to know but same goes for all of my coats as well i've never had to wash one i just literally give it a clean if i get a little bit of mud on there because i use one of my redown coats for dog walking if i get a bit of mud on there i just use a damp cloth to clean it when i get home and that usually takes the mud right off and the same goes for these doggy ones as well we just give it a wipe with a damp cloth and then they look good as new right moving on next item and actually sticking with our cat for this one it's a black cashmere cardigan now i have a bit of a thing for cardigans at the moment and around this time of year i do love wearing a cardigan when it's still sort of warm enough that you don't necessarily need, you know, like a polar neck or something. I feel like this kind of knitwear where you can have a slightly lower cut is just really nice. And if anyone else, I, it can't be me that's been obsessed with this, but if anyone else has been watching The Watcher on Netflix, I have been obsessed with Naomi Watts' wardrobe in The Watcher. So she plays one of the main characters. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do any spoiler alerts. Just watch it, it's really, really good. It's also based on a true story. Um, but she has worn, or she's been styled in the series in a plethora of cardigans. And I love how she wears them. Or oh, it's not Naomi Watts, is it? it's her character and she has a stylist, but I love how her character has been styled. Very sort of luxe, just a really beautiful, and more often than not, they're very expensive and more than likely cashmere cardigans and just worn with a couple of pieces of really sort of non-intrusive jewellery and it's such a simple look but it just looks it looks very luxe and they're really versatile so you can wear them with jeans or you could wear them with trousers kind of like what I've got on and you don't have to wear them on their own. They're a useful piece as well to have in the winter time when it comes to layering. So again, you could layer over a t-shirt, you could layer over a camisole or over another piece of knitwear if you needed to be really cozy and warm, you could layer over another basic knit or even something with a higher neck like a basic polar neck. Now, in terms of size, I did upsize in this. So again, I should really be a size small according to their size chart but I knew I wanted a slightly more sort of slouchier fit. So I upsized to a medium. So I've gone up by one size. And once I tried it on when it arrived, I was like, yes, okay, this was the right choice. So if you want the kind of fit 
like you will see on me in the cutaways. I would size up if you're happy. And it's not a really tight cardigan, so if you were to stick to your normal size, obviously it would depend on bust size. I am very small, I only have an A cup, so that's not something I need to sort of take into consideration. But if you did need a little bit more space in the bust area, then yes, potentially size up. Otherwise you could stick true to your normal size and it would have a little bit of slouch to it. But if you want that extra, size up. And for anyone that might be looking for a slightly more budget friendly option, Arquette have a very, very similar shape and style of cardigan, which has got the full buttons and the V-neck. Comes in full colors, but it's an alpaca and merino wool blend rather than cashmere. And that's actually less than half the price of this one. So I just thought I'd give that to you guys as an alternative. I'll link it down below in the description box for anyone who is interested. Right, moving on to some footwear now and a pair of boots, which I loved so much that I bought them in both colors, but they're quite heavy. So I'm gonna put the black ones down and I'm gonna just stick with these chestnut ones to give you the little bit of backstory on why and how and where I bought these. So these were another wish list item that were on my wish list, I think from about last summer. So it was, 2021 that I added these to my wish list and then because we were doing so much stuff renovating the house like it was very full on towards the tail end of last year because obviously that's when we moved in and it was just all through winter we were just doing project after project after project so granted we didn't go out very much we weren't sort of living normal life if you like so I didn't end up buying these, even though they were on my wish list, because I just thought for the price, mm, it's probably not worth it. So I kind of neglected them and left them. Then if we fast forward to this summer, I was on the My Teresa app and I saw that these had gone in the sale. Then a couple of days later, I was sort of considering them because I wasn't sure. And then a couple of days later, I was sort of pondering them. And then I got a message to say, or a little app notification to say there's 30% off anything that's in the sale. So I went on, they had my size and I was like, do you know what? They're on my wish list, So they are a thumbs up purchase. I'll buy them and I can always return them if for whatever reason they're not right. So I bought them and this was in July that I bought these boots, which was about 30 degrees in temperature. So they arrived, tried them on, loved them and they were quite heavily discounted as well. I then went on to the My Teresa site again, just to see how many were left. Cause some of you might, if you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen that I posted them on my stories. And I saw the black pair, which were about 150 pounds less in the sale. And they then still had the extra 30% off. And granted I hadn't actually worn these yet because it was July when they arrived but I loved them so much and knew that they were gonna be a really good sort of core winter staple. I just ended up buying the black as well. Now, the reason I had these on my wish list was because I did want a pair of sort of cozier furry lined boots that weren't Uggs. And I'm sorry, this opinion may divide us all. I'm not a fan of Ugg boots. I don't like the style of them. Um, they're just, they're just not my cup of tea to each their own. I think there's some people that wear them and they just, you know, they just, they look great. But for me, there's just something about an Ugg boot that I'm not a fan of. I had them when I was younger, like when I was in my teens, but now I wanted something, I don't know, with I suppose a little bit more substance to them. I wanted something with a proper like chunky rubber sole. And I wanted something, I suppose, with a little bit more style substance to them as well. And these have ticked all of those boxes. So I'm definitely glad that I got these. And to be honest with you, it was just an added bonus that they were in the sale because I've essentially got two pairs now for the full price of just one pair of these boots. Okay, moving on to my next item, which is a long black coat by the brand by Melane Berger, I think that's how you pronounce it. But then again, I could be very wrong. So this was a coat that again has been on my wish list, but it was on my wish list with another option. So 
This coat was one option. The other one was the Totem, and I think it's called the Robe Coat, or it might be the Belted Coat. I'll link it down below in the description box for anyone that wants to see it. Um, but that was my other option. And there is quite a difference in price between the two. So the Totem Coat, I believe, is £920, although that's made from 100% wool, and this is a wool blend. And this one was £500. 50 I think I bought this for um, and that was one winning sort of point that tipped me over the edge to buy this one was the price but also length this one was 135.1 centimeters long the totem was 134 centimeters long so those 11 millimeters again tipped this coat in my favor and you know what, now that I've got it, I absolutely love it. I love the shape. It's another unlined coat, so very much the same as like the coats that you might have seen in Wednesday's video from the curated. And yeah, this one now ticks the box of what I wanted for a long coat. For me, this length is absolutely perfect. I've even already worn this a few times already, so you might have seen my outfits, including this coat over on Instagram, and yes very 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 happy that I finally found a long coat for a tall person. Right on to my final item which is another piece of outerwear. I know this video has been quite outerwear heavy but and I've mentioned this before I do invest and I really sort of champion outerwear come the autumn winter seasons. They're my favourite seasons by far that's probably because I have a very hefty outerwear collection, but it's the piece that sort of covers the rest of your outfit. So I feel like outerwear is really worth investing in and really considering a great deal. So final item is this Totem Scarf Jacket. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a very it purchase this season. I've already seen it on quite a few people. Now, Totem brought out a similar jacket to this. I suppose that this was the catalyst of this jacket becoming a, an it item. They brought out a similar jacket to this last year. It had the attached scarf. It was the same sort of shape, same sleeve length and sleeve shape. It had these little pockets on the front, but it had uh, tassels on the scarf, on the end of the scarf, and it had what's called a blanket stitch detail, which ran along the seams. And again, that coat sort of exploded and it was everywhere. And I looked at it and I thought, yeah, do you know what? It's a lovely coat and I love the theory of it. But for me, the blanket stitch detail and the tassels on the scarf were almost, I suppose maybe a bit too bohemian for me because my style isn't really bohemian at all. So with that in mind, I was like, well, I'm not gonna buy this jacket just because everyone else has got it and because it's an it jacket to have. That's not how my mind works. It's not how my buying process is. And I thought, do you know what would make that jacket more me is if it were plain, if they removed all the fuss, removed the tassels, removed the blanket stitching. And what do you know? My dream or wish came true. I personally, this is a lot more me. It's a lot more minimal. And yeah, just, I'm not a big fan of bells and whistles on things. So this one is definitely more appropriate to me. And the color is absolutely beautiful. Camel is a firm favorite of mine, especially for autumn, because it's the sort of time of year when you get all the reds and the browns coming out on the trees. And Camel just always makes me feel very autumnal, I suppose. Now, as this jacket is to Tem, it is a much higher price point. But what I would say is that with any item that becomes very much like an it item and it sort of explodes on Instagram and social media, just keep your eyes on the high street. If you feel like this is an item that perhaps you can't afford at the to 10 price bracket, but you feel like would be a really good, valuable addition to your wardrobe to have a similar sort of coat or jacket style like this, keep your eyes on the high street. H&M Premium have already got an attached scarf coat in a coat, like full length coat length, but I've just got a feeling that either Arquette or Cos or H&M Premium is gonna bring out something. It's more than likely gonna be wool as well. And there's gonna be a very, very similar high street dupe out there or probably several of them. So 
I will keep my eyes peeled and I'll let you guys know if I spot one and yeah that would be my advice to you guys it's it's a big thing so all the high street brands are going to want to copy it right so those are the items which are new in my wardrobe for this season if you've got a question about anything that you've seen in the video and perhaps I haven't answered that during the video do leave me a comment down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible but for now thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend or your week depending on when you're watching this and I will see you next time